Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. A group of 200 Polish medics departed for Slovakia today to help in a week-long testing campaign in the Central European state aimed at taming the coronavirus epidemic. The country has seen a sharp rise in new cases and the regions bordering Poland are amongst the hardest hit. Speaking at the Warsaw Military Airport, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said the aid given by the Polish medics was a neighbourly gesture, also aimed at increasing safety at the Polish borders. Relations between states also involve the help given to each other, help when it is needed most. Today, Polish medics are departing for Slovakia. We want to help the testing of Slovaks, in line with their scheme, especially in the areas near the border. We want to help in border areas also because we want to ensure better safety there during the pandemic. Slovakia, with a population of 5.5 million, has seen record numbers of new cases and hospitalizations since the turn of the year. On their arrival in Slovakia, the Poles were greeted by Prime Minister Matovic. I am very pleased that behind us are 65 Polish doctors, nurses and medical workers who came to help in Slovakia. They represent only a small part of the group of 211 who will arrive. Only these 65 flew to Bratislava. Another group of more than 60 are arriving in Kishutsa and Arava and others will be in the area around Starolubovna. All Slovaks have asked to be tested between January the 18th and January the 26th. After that, only people with a negative result will be able to go to their workplace. The rest will have to stay at home. A negative test result will also be required for trips to the country or going to the post office. The funeral ceremonies of Colonel Lydia Levov eberla a nurse of the Home Army, 5th Vilno Brigade, and life companion of Major Wopasko, with whom she was arrested in 1948 by the Communist secret police, took place today at the Powonski Military Cemetery. Polish President Andrzej Duda took part in the ceremony and gave a speech. Colonel Lydia Lvova Berla fought both against the Germans and later against the Soviet Communists. <laughs> The funeral with honours and flag bearers took place with the participation of the highest authorities of the Polish state. Colonel Lydia Lvov Aberle was a Russian by birth but a Pole by heart. She sacrificed her life for Poland. Next generations wouldn't be able to fight if it wasn't for the courage of the cursed soldiers. People like her, they never gave up. We're grateful for her life which was a huge sacrifice and brought a lot of good for all of us. I wielkim dobrem, wielkim dobrem dla nas wszystkich. Colonel Lydia Lwowa Berla, codenamed Lala, was a Home Army soldier and life companion of Major Wopaszczko, who was the commander of the Home Army 5th Vilno Brigade. He was a participant in the military actions undertaken during the occupation and the anti-communist uprising. Later, she was arrested with Major Wopaszczko and sentenced to life imprisonment, but was set free in 1956 following the Stalinist thaw. In response to the arrest of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny, the European Parliament has passed a resolution calling for the European Union to stop the completion of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline planned to take Russian natural gas to Europe. Navalny, Russian President Vladimir Putin's most prominent critic, was detained at the weekend and later jailed for alleged parole violations after flying back to Russia for the first time since being poisoned by a military-grade NAV agent. German Chancellor Angela Merkel who has continued to back the pipeline between Germany and Russia despite criticism elsewhere in the European Union, said on Thursday that her view of the project had not changed despite the Navalny case. The European Parliament voted overwhelmingly to block the pipeline construction work, with 581 votes in favour, 50 against and 44 abstentions, calling on the European Union to review relations with Russia in the light of Navalny's arrest. The European Parliament calls on the EU and its member states to critically review cooperation with Russia in various foreign policy platforms and on projects such as Nord Stream 2, the completion of which the EU must stop immediately, the resolution said. The whole EU-Russia relations cannot be reduced to the poisoning of Mr. Navalny. We will respond swiftly and decisively to this poisoning, but we have other dimensions in our relations with Russia that we need to continue to address. Nord Stream 2 is designed to double capacity of the existing undersea Nord Stream gas pipeline from Russia to Germany to 110 billion cubic metres per year, more than half of Russia's overall pipeline gas exports to Europe. Led by Russia's Gazprom, 
with Western partners, the pipeline is more than 90% complete and scheduled to operate from this year. The United States is fiercely against Nord Stream 2, imposing sanctions on a ship involved in construction work. Poland has also opposed the project. So my plea to you, uh, uh, Mr. Borrell, is we need the fastest as possible more sanctions, broader sanctions to more Russians, to the oligarchs. And I think even I have never said it uh, before that even Nord Stream 2 has to be reconsidered uh, in, that, uh, in that respect. The project has split the European Union, with some members saying it will undermine traditional gas transit state Ukraine and increase the bloc's energy reliance on Russia. The European Union should devise a new strategy for the EU's relations with Russia, centred around support for civil society, which promotes democratic values, the rule of law, fundamental freedoms and human rights, the resolution said. Facebook Inc. said on January the 21st that it will refer its decision to suspend indefinitely the accounts of former United States President Donald Trump to its independent oversight board. Trump will remain suspended while the board, a recently created body that can overrule the company's decisions on content, reviews the decision. Facebook blocked Trump's access to his Facebook and Instagram accounts over concerns of further violent unrest following the January 6th storming of the United States Capitol by the former president's supporters. The head of global affairs, the British former top politician Nick Clegg, said that he's confident that the company has made the right decision. I'm very confident of our case, um, but a bit, you know, it's, it's a bit analogous to someone going to court who's very, very confident of their case. I can't guarantee you that the oversight board will agree because it's an independent board. But I'm very confident that any reasonable person looking at the circumstances in which we took that decision and looking at our existing policies will agree. Um, uh, as I say, it is an indefinite uh, uh, ban we've, we've placed on Donald Trump's access to his Facebook and Instagram accounts, and um, we have no plans to reinstate that. Facebook did not ask for an expedited review, so the board, which said on Thursday it had accepted the case, will have a maximum of 90 days to make a ruling and for Facebook to act upon it. There are limits. It's never been a free-for-all as far as political speech is concerned, and we've always sought to apply our, our, our policies on hate speech and incitement uh, to, to violence firmly and fairly. Of course, there are instances where some people will say you should have applied those policies in that instance to that post, and others who said we shouldn't have applied them at all. We've tried to be methodical in explaining where we don't apply those policies. The administrators of Trump's Facebook page will have the option to submit a written statement challenging Facebook's decision. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.